Okay. So, so idea here is when we are saying this is what they call it test tube babies. Test tube babies means you have visualization. <coughs> they never do in the test tube. They do in the in a culture dish. Okay. So idea here is you're having sperm that is going to fertilize an egg in vitro in a culture dish and then once the sperm is going to fertilize the egg you let the fertilized egg to develop so remember when egg is fertilized once egg is fertilized you call it an embryo a zygos or fertilized egg is an embryo right because the development has started in it and once that is that has started a development you can basically transfer that embryo either to the donor who has donated the oocyte or to a surrogate person so the surrogacy is very common nowadays right so you can do that and then this is not a new technique this was actually started in 1978 the first IVF baby was born a lot of new developments have taken place but the success rate is still kind of 25 percent 30 percent it's not like it has increased a lot so that's the success rate now how we do it okay so remember that when we are saying that the in vitro fertilization is going to take place what it need it need multiple things the first thing is you should have ample availability of the oocytes and if you say the ample availability that means you need to do hyperovulation and when we say hyperovulation you have to go back to the hormonal control of the oogenesis and we'll talk in a minute like what actually they do then you harvest those eggs mix with sperm or you can do micro injection of the sperm you can basically put the sperm directly inside the egg and we know that the plc is already present in the sperm right so that can start the process of development and if you do the micro injection of the sperm you can actually increase the rate of success up to 27 percent so still 27 percent it's not like 50 percent right so then what you do when you are doing it so this is we, we are familiar with this structure right we have this ovary from ovary the oocytes are released and they catch by fingering and go to the oviduct and go to the uterus okay so forget about these morula and all those things that is our next topic we're going to talk about that so here we are going to take the simple idea the idea here is that you need to make many of these follicles to start growing remember we said like a group of follicles start growing under the influence of follicular stimulating hormone so if you want hyperovulation, you need more than five or seven follicles to grow but that means you are going to inject the female with a follicular stimulating hormone okay so they take the hormone follicular stimulating hormone and that hormone induces multiple follicles to start growing then those follicles are growing you need to have those follicles being ruptured out so that the oocyte can be released and we know that luteinizing hormone does that so initially use the follicle stimulating hormone let them grow let them grow big and then you add luteinizing hormone so what is going to happen many of these are going to rupture out now the trick here is you don't want those oocyte to go into the oviduct because you want those oocyte to capture right so they don't just before the ovulation is going to take place that means just before they are released out from the ovary what they do they basically under the ultrasound image they make a guide and basically they pluck out almost 24 eggs from the ovary making sense so far so they don't let they just don't let ovulation to occur because otherwise they will just come here in the 
all of them. So you want all of those particular tools. So it's a, it's an expensive technique. It's not a it's not a cheap technique. Expensive technique, right? But then what they do? Once they have those, they are going to have these eggs. They will take like we culture ourselves, right? So we, we basically put media. So instead of putting media in the whole plate, what they will do, they will put an oil drop. And in all that oil drop, they put a little bit media and they are going to put egg and sperms together. So one egg, many sperms there, right? So this is what they are doing. So this is that oil drop in that oil drop so that they don't spread out. That's the idea. They want them to kind of concentrate it around that. So they have many sperms each. So they put 24 eggs and so many sperms there and basically let them fertilize. Once that happened, what they do is, now look here, this same is actually pretty good if, if you can see it. So remember like when we're saying that when the fusion of genetic material takes place, we said that egg membrane is, uh, the nuclear membrane of sperm is still intact. The egg also, that's what happening. You can see the intact membrane right there. Once they come close, this membrane disassembles. But these are the polar bodies. First polar body, second polar body. First, second. And they will all basically degenerate, right? So what they do is, so one cell divide, you get the two cells, right? Then you get the four cells and you get the eight cells. Now this eight cell thing is critical to understand. And we'll talk more when we talk about the stem cells. At this position, each of these eight cells have the capability to give a new human being. So if you separate those eight cells, each cell is going to give, can give you a new individual. But that capability is only up to here. Now, when we are talking this, we are actually also asking many questions to ourselves. Now think about that. So out of this, what I'll, I'll, I'll ask those questions in a minute. Just go for this procedure. Now what they have, this thing is, they have 24 of these embryos being formed in this stage when they are eight cell stage, right? Different clinics do it different way. So few clinics, what they will do, they will take egg and they will take sperm, separate them, put them in the oviduct. Where fertilization take place in oviduct? Yeah. Ampla. So they'll put them in the ampla and they hope that fertilization is going to take place. That procedure is when we have seen many women will have blockage of fallopian tube. There that thing worked pretty well so they just let everything happen in the oviduct itself and then the fertilization is going to take place in ampla. That's one way. The other thing they can do is, they can take fertilized egg and let it go for 20, 48 hours up to this stage. And then what they are going to do is, they are going to implant these embryos, not all 24, two to four embryos. And two to four embryos, either they put here in the ampulla region, they call it tubal transfer because in the common term we call it fallopian tube, right? So they put in the fallopian tube or the oviduct in the ampulla region, again guided by ultrasound probes, or they can directly put in the uterus, right? So when we'll talk a little bit more in the later, our later topics, you will realize that Putting this embryo is better here where the ovulation is going to take place than putting them in uterus. Okay, so this is more successful than to put them in the ampulla region. Okay, that gives these this embryos to actually divide further and move forward in their different stages. Now, having said that, This I just uh, work there. No. Again, the success rate is 26%. It's not that much. Okay. Now here is the thing. 
how to improve this? Just 23%. You can block certain hormones. You say, so what prepared the, the, the uterus for implantation? What hormone? Progesterone, right? You need to block luteinizing hormone so that more, no more ovulation can take place. So they can block the luteinizing hormone and they can give more progesterone, okay? Then what they can do is, they can, now this is an important thing. We'll, we'll talk more about this, what is blastocyst. So, so far we are saying that they implant embryo after 48 hours. So embryo divide, divide from 48 hours, they become 126 cell, and then they change into a shape, and if we have time, we'll actually reach there today, today's cell. That is called blastula. So that's a, a developmental stage. So I will just draw the structure of a blastocyst. Blastocyst is kind of like this. So those cells have divided, right? One cell have divided to 8, 24, 128. And then you will find this is specifically in the mammal, this situation become. So this structure is called blastocyst. This outer layer, this is called trophoectoderm. And these cells, this group of cells, those are called, this is called inner cell mass. This is actually the stage when the implantation, immediately after this, the implantation takes place. Okay? So they can, if they take, the embryo in this stage, they think it is more successful because this trophoectoderm actually it becomes part of, it makes part of placenta. And we'll talk more how it, how it makes placenta and all, all those things. So they're saying that if you can block a luteinizing hormone, make more progesterone, you can have more chances of success. Or Instead of implanting in eight cell stage, you implant in blastocyst stage, you have more chances of success. But again, success rate is never 50%. It's again, maybe 33%, 30%, like that, in that range. Now, the other thing is, remember we always said that if you have the ova or oocyte with the surrounding cells, because surrounding cells, the granular cell and all those cells, they produce certain nutrients, right? And that help in attraction of sperm. We know that what, what they produce? What was the chemical? Pristone. Yeah, first one. And they also secrete progesterone, both the thing. So they both attract the sperm, help the fertilization take place. So if we have those cells surrounding, and this is actually a picture right here. So this is with these cells, with all the granular cells, with all that. So this will be more successful because we are having. So as the science is developing from 1978 when they did the first experiment versus now, they are improving the techniques. But the technique still is not that like 100%, still less than 50% always. Now, here is one thing they can do. This is the picture of the blastocyst, which is a straw. This is the blastocyst look like. Now, let me let me just hold back in a minute, for a minute. So there can be multiple uses of this technique. It's not only that the people who have problem in fertility they go to these clinics. But for example, if, if a woman is working in the environment, those environments are very hazardous. You know, you're working in a lab, you're exposed to radioactive chemicals or carcinogen all the time. You don't want, and we know there's a limited number of uh, germ cells in the female, right? And most of them die at the time of birth. And we said, we did talk about trisomy. We said from 21 to 30 years, the rate of trisomy increases a lot. After that, it's kind of like devastating. So if you don't want to be in that situation, what people do, 
the women can freeze their oocyte. So what they do, they take out the oocyte and freeze them so that when they are ready for, for kids, they can basically go and say, okay, let's do in vitro fertilization and go for it. Now, but there's a caveat here. It's very difficult to maintain oocyte in frozen state because oocyte are not, they are kind of in a stage where they are divided. You know, we said the cytostatic factors are there. Those cytostatic factors, they block oocyte in the second meiotic metaphase. So it's difficult to maintain those cytostatic factors so that, so that the oocyte can be maintained in the second meiotic metaphase. So that is the big trouble there. But still, people do it. So again, success rate is always the same. So again, what I said, like it can be work with toxin, wishing to have children later, or some people are undergoing chemotherapy. You don't want at that time your eggs to be exposed to those chemotherapeutic agents, right? This can produce a lot of bad things here. Now, and again, people donate oocyte, and those oocytes can be used for the women with infertility problems. Now, there is a big, big trouble there in all those things. So let, let's talk about two things here before we go further. And I need you to talk, not me, right? You might have heard, like, this was a trend, and even this is still not that uncommon. People giving advertisements in the newspaper in the bigger cities, for example, as in New York, looking for beautiful, smart women to donate their oocyte. <laughs> to get the babies who will be smart and the beautiful. That's, that's the whole scenario there. In China, there was a news, I think three or four years ago, they were trying to actually make designer babies in that way. They were kind of screening the kids, the parents, smarter parents, I do this, 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 this. And they were trying to make a kind of a superhuman race so that all the kids who were born, they will be smart, they will be like, Chinese are usually small, but some are six feet also, taller, smaller, so that's, that's happening to This can be actually used for that, right? Now, this is one point I want you to talk about. Second point is what I said, you have these eight. This is kind of like when we talk about science, Believe me, I believe in God, right? I don't. But religion is to go to the truth, right? So let me ask you this question. And I usually ask this question. These, I said all of these eight cells have the capability to give a new organism. That's why sometimes you have heard in the news that a mother gave seven kids are produced, six are produced, right? That what happened when they are doing this thing, when they are putting this, all these separate out. When they separate out, so you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can have up to eight babies. So, what happened to the soul? So you say, the life started at conception. Right? So at conception means a new soul is being formed. Right? So now the egg has started developing. But now it has developed and give you the eight cells. Each cell has the capability to give you a new individual. So the soul is divided into eight. Let's go a little bit further. At this stage, what can happen? This mass actually can divide in two. You can get two monozygotic twins. So one soul divided into, talk about this and give me the answers. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? And I also said you one thing, that they are using 24 X Right? 24 eggs are fertilized. 
24 lives billion actually right out of those they are implanting four chances are 30 percent success say success the rest 20 are frozen after five ten years they are going to discard them down the drain they're not going to keep them forever so say not successful try again try again still you will not have all 24 years so fertilized egg or embryo is it ethical to make 24 and throw them means that's what I'm bringing all those God spirit and all those concepts there right talk to each other and then talk to me what what do you think about all those things <clears throat> so I have raised three points there donation of the oocyte right designer babies then I'm talking about this the soul being split into eight or two then I'm talking about what about the souls in this Do they have right? Do they have parents? That's the other thing. Are they living? Do you even consider them living? Talk. It's a, it, it can be a hated discussion. Don't, don't get angry on me if I'm, I'm bringing all those questions, but that's what I And I didn't talk about the cloning yet, but yeah. I mean, I think there's so much to learn. Well, it's the nice thing is that, like, in the past, they've said that, like, identical twins can feel just pain and hopeless because they didn't share it. Yeah. And that's that's mine. Don't like to run the I think donating is okay as long as it's because of, like, infertility that we know. That you should be able to be like, you're smart, you're pretty. Yeah. I have to say, I think it's <laughs> Why do they take 24 oocytes that they're not even going to use? The procedure is like that. It's not a full pro procedure. So they say 25% 24, success. Do one time, failure. Do again, failure. It's kind of you do, it's a painful procedure. You don't want a woman to go there and get every time, you know, four eggs and do all those hormones and then go under that and then the take those out. The hormones are really hard on yeah. women to do. Like, that's, well, my research has to do with infertility, so. Like, I'm doing, like, so I've like read a lot about how it affects women and stuff like that. So, yeah. Do you remember, I think it was a couple years ago, some guy came into a reunion and there was a debate about genetic, uh, genetically modified uh, human. Did you guys hear that? No, I didn't. We're going to go there after this. Yeah. Okay. This reminds me of it. It was like a, it was like an ethical debate and I remember seeing Dr. Reynolds there. Um, I didn't get a chance to talk to him about it. One guy was ethically debating, and then another guy was saying like the positives and negatives of it, of it, and it all just came down to if humans could really control their want to form a real race rather than just get rid of one or two genetic diseases that are terminal illnesses to use for modification rather than going and making like superhuman. Uh, actually, there is a. W w I'll talk in a minute about okay, that. Okay. Give me. Yeah. What can I'm going to go there on the cloning. Yeah. Make but sure but let's let's talk about this first. Okay. Uh, I, mean, I don't want to give my views because I don't want to like empower you with my views and you 
<laughs> a lot to listen from you guys, you know? I think that it's okay to donate oocytes if it's for like a cause that a woman can't have her own child, but I don't believe in designer babies. That's how I feel. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I don't know about y'all, but I'm kind of religious. <laughs> and so like throwing away like fertilized eggs, that kind of seems It's kind of a gray area. I think. It's like for a good cause, but like. Well, I think that another thing that you have to think about is that these women that are doing like the, they can't have, or they're having difficulty with infertility, they do this because they really do want kids. Yeah. And this is like that. And so, dollars. yeah, it's lots, it's a lot of money. And then you don't really want to have to go through the procedure of taking the eggs out of the body multiple times because it is very difficult. So I understand why they take 24 because it gives them the best chance. I understand, yeah, I, it's really. I'm a giver and for the I don't really, you know, maybe they could just replace it with like one or two. One reduction, the 100,000 so baby waiting for adoption in our country. Adoption is also difficult though for families because it's, I don't know, that put, that also puts a different kind of stress on you. Um, you don't always get, the kid's not always gonna be like you. They're gonna be, some kids have trauma. It's a lot to deal with. So I think adoption is another, it is an option, but I do think that it is also like, it's another difficult path that you have to be able to like mentally prepare yourself for. So I'm not hearing from you, but that is another question. <laughs> Killing is better than adoption? No, <laughs> not my personal belief, no. Yeah, of course, it's kind of a... I don't know, but then it also raises the question, then why can uh, other women abort children that they don't want when there are children? We'll, we'll go there, we'll go there, we'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, I want to concentrate on those three. I mean, I want to be focused on this, you know, this discussion as well, well, you know, far away. <clears throat> I didn't hear anything from you two. They are still, I didn't hear, I need you to be more vocal and think what you guys think. I personally, it's too gray for me to say one over the other because on one hand, this whole process is entirely for a woman or a family or a couple who can't have kids who so desperately want them, they're willing to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a 30% chance. And if that does happen, then great. But on, then on the other hand, you have the leftovers, which is horrible to say, but that's literally what it is. And like you said, after five, 10 years, they're just gone. If you do raise them and put them in for adoption, that's not like saying it's giving them life, but what quality? And I think that's better than killing, but then again, there's hundreds of thousands of kids who haven't been adopted and they grow up without parents, like without knowing who they are. And I don't know, I think that's better than just not living at all, but that's still like you're putting a, a life just in turmoil for ever, I would assume. Like, I don't know if anyone could really live with that. say like one or the other like if it was me and my wife didn't have kids and we really wanted kids sure like I mean if I was just a millionaire like I would give it a shot if we were that desperate but I'd give a shot for 24 years give it a <laughs> no. if she really wanted a kid and we really want to do it and I feel like going to adopt might be a better option than just giving 24 souls who have no chance outside of because like not all of them are going to get a chance to be go through the process and then even the ones that do like what 20 30 percent so i think it might be a little more ethical to adopt like a younger child than to conceive more children that are just going to get essentially killed 
So I guess that would be where I would maybe say it was more ethical because there's less steps involved and you don't just cultivate life in a tube and then hope that happens. And if it doesn't, if they're all done, if it does, then you still send some. That's more death rather than just going to adopt a child who's already need, who's in need rather than just creating more life. I don't know if that makes sense, but. William, what's your take? Um, so I know a lot of people who are adopted and uh, I just don't think like there's some families that I don't think would work well with adopting because I don't think they're like capable to like adopt a child and then like kind of raise it as their own. So I've kind of seen that. And then, so I think the uh, fertilization would be a better option for that kind of thing. But I think it, uh, I mean, I don't know. It is a gray area, so. Theoretically though, if you, I mean, all of the eggs are gonna die anyways. <laughs> That is that is my it. question, and I think who can tell me what you think? What time the child get the right? I mean, in our country, when the child get the right? Have you heard of yeah, FO law? Like the, 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 the second, like I think you have, like for abortion. I thought that once you were in like the second, second trimester, it was like no longer. I don't so right. Yeah. I think it yeah, I think like West Virginia you can abort up to like the nine months. I thought that that was changed, but I don't know. No, I'm pretty sure it's just released just passed, since Texas just released the one with the second. So what do you think? Uh, maybe I didn't hear anything from you. What do you think? These these I will say kids, whatever I want to say, do they have any rights? I mean, who's going to talk about their right? Yeah, I mean, I don't personally like believe in abortion. I mean, it's not about abortion. It's I know, about but that's because I believe like that, like the rights of like uh -huh. humanity started at like conception. Um, and like I know there's like an, a lot of arguments of like, well, then did they get like insurance and like everything else based off them? And like, I don't know. It's just kind of a gray area. But I have two adopted brothers, so I'm all for adoption. So what about, you said soul, okay? When you're saying raising those souls for good. What about these seven, eight souls which are born? So where the soul concept is there? That's I'm, I'm, they're all souls. I mean, to me, like, like adoption over creating more souls that technically like aren't even seen as rights because they're like microscopic and, you know, like. Yeah, that is my question. I'm saying. I don't if that is, if all those cells, eight cells, they stay together, they give one individual. If they separate, that means you say one soul. But what time soul enters in the in the embryo? But if but if they separate out, you get eight souls. So do they get like so in the female when they're like there's eight of them? Do seven of them die? No, no, they don't die. They don't die. They go to the next process like this. They don't Together. die. Together. Together. But like somehow if they separate, that, that what you hear mostly in vitro, all those eight babies, seven babies are all in vitro mm -hmm. fertilization. So when they're trying to put those in, what is happening, those cells are separating out. Then each cell can dwell into a full fledged embryo. It depends when you believe you get the soul. Yeah, that's what I want to know. What do you guys think? Uh, Miss. Uh, does that maybe make consciousness? So if you say about consciousness, so then abortion people are right. There's no consciousness in 12 week embryo. Yeah, yeah it says that. Well, I looked up abortion, it says 12th week. It, you can get it no later than 24 weeks, but that's a rare case. But there is no conscious. Consciousness is pretty late stage. Yeah. Even the baby is born doesn't have that conscious, which you call it, right? Which we think conscious is like self yeah. from other feelings and all those things, right? It's like tendency. Well, 
I think that they all ate get their own if they're separated. That's my belief. Right. So let me tell you something else. And we'll talk it a little bit more and we'll go there. So have you heard of embryonic stem cells? How many of you think embryonic stem cell means abortion? If you just take one of the eight, does that, does that destroy the embryo if you take one of the eight? Actually, no. This is the stage, this stage is almost eight days after fertilization. There is no technique in the world which can tell woman is pregnant at this time. So even no one knows woman is pregnant. There's no test which can tell. At this time, the, this has still not implanted. This is moving in the oviduct. Let me show you. So that is kind of moving here. It's more uh, than it becomes large. Uh, it comes here. And the size is kind of the period on your book. There is no technique in the world which can tell you woman is pregnant. There is no technique by which you can actually find that period like this, like this, in that whole reproductive tract. No, wait. So embryonic stem cells are never coming from abortion. They are all coming from these in vitro fertilized eggs. So, so the reason why I want to talk to you because whenever you're going to vote, whenever you're going to think, you should be informed about what's happening. So a lot of politicians talk about banning embryonic stem cell. They link to abortion. That is totally false. Lie, nothing else. No embryonic stem cell can come from the abortion. Can these cells be used to make clones? No. These cells are, so these cells which are making one, two, three, four, seven, these are called proteopotent cells. Proteopotent means each cell has the capability to give a new individual. These cells are pluripotent cells. They can give every cell type of, these cells are pluripotent. They can give you every cell type of the body, but they cannot give you a new individual. So anybody saying embryonic stem cell is cloning, that is also false. Everybody's, anybody saying embryonic stem means uh, abortion, that is also false. But no one talk about, just think about, uh, while I'm reading this, no, one, no politician talk about in vitro fertility clinics. They talk about fertility clinics, they raise voices about abortion, but nobody talk about in vitro fertility clinics. Nobody talk about 20 embryos being carried, sending down the drain. Because they get money. From insurance, from all those things. This is all about that. Why people are against this thing, embryonic stem cell research? Because a lot of the pharmaceutical company will be gone. Remember when I when we started, we said it's very hard to study memory and fertilization because everything happens inside the body. We actually do not know how brain develop. We do not know how liver develop because we cannot do in the human. We cannot kill developing baby, right? But you can take these cells, you can develop into liver, you can develop into kidney, you can actually study how they develop. If you know how normal develop, only then you can think about how the abnormal comes into existence. Only then you can talk about disease, right? Now think about, have, even you take simple paracetamol. You take paracetamol and it says 10,000 side effects. You know why those 10,000 side effects are? Because those drugs are tested on 100, 2,000, 10,000 people but out of those 10,000 people, you will find 70% people are of A race, 25% B, maybe 1% from C or D race, right? So they are not tested on every population in the same way. But you can have stem cells from different population. 
you can test those direct, for example, you make kidney from here, throw it there. And you can say, hey, this drug will be more effective, for example, in Caucasian population versus African American. You will have this side effect in Caucasian, but not in African American. So you can go in that depth. But no one talks about that. So wherever you go, when you do think, think about all those things. Now let's go to a little bit further. And that is about the cloning. Okay. So when we talk about the cloning, what is cloning? And I will go to that that thing also, the Casper Cas, we can talk about what is that. So yeah, one more thing that is happening there in in vitro fertility clinic. Actually, you can take a polar body from there and you can do all the genetic analysis of the polar body. And this can be actually done in the, even in the normal people also. So you can take that polar body and you can basically take out this. It will have the genetic material. You can screen for any mutation, anything happening there. And you will know that whether you want to implant this or not. Okay. Now, then, this is all about what they're doing. Okay, now let's talk about the cloning. What, what is cloning? Cloning is essentially, you want to make the individual exact replica of the other individual, right? So we know that the, the sheep dolly was cloned earlier. So cloning can be happening in two places. One is natural cloning, like here, where this embryo, this inner cell mass is split into when that split into, you get two individuals which are geno genomically identical. Their mitochondrial DNA is same. Their nuclear DNA is same. But are they genetically equal? That's another question. The reason is you can have epigenetic changes. Even two monozygotic twins are not genetically identical in terms of epigenetic modification. So even though they look same, but they will not have all the gene expressed in the same way in both because they can have epigenetic modifications. Now, there is then other way of cloning. What is that? You can take the somatic cell, for example, somatic cells, skin, kidney, lung, liver, right? From one person. So this is person A. And uh, this is person B. So you can take a, for example, oocyte. You take a oocyte from person B. This oocyte has a nucleus. You remove that nucleus. Take that nucleus out. This nucleus is now out, so this is now without any nucleus. Now you can take a somatic cell, for example, a skin cell from this person. This is a 2N nucleus right there. You put that 2N nucleus right here. Jack some electricity and that allow the fusion. Now this oocyte, you know that how to start the fertilization. Increase the calcium, put some IP3 injection there, right? Once that is going to happen, this oocyte, now it has two N nucleus, uh, both male and female, Genetic, epigenetic changes because this is having 50% from the male, 50% from the female, and put them again in the oviduct, let it develop. Then you will have a clone produced that will be clone of A. Making sense? And then it will be nucleus material will be same, but mitochondria. DNA will be different because mitochondria is in the cytoplasm. You're taking only the nucleus from there. And that's how actually they created this first first uh, shape. Remember the dolly was cloned? That was exactly the same technique. So this is essentially is the cloning, right? Now, what can you do here if you're doing, think about cloning? Cloning can also have many, many things. You can, again, the same thing being biology. You can take the oocyte from the older individual, take oocyte out, 
and jab that into the donor, which can be young woman. So you will have everything surrounding it will be good. And then you will have less carcinogen or less other things in this egg. And basically you can give to newborn baby. So this is cloning, right? Can we do human cloning? Yes, we can do easily. It's not a big deal. So very simple technique. Should we do it? I don't know. Do I want more Einstein's walking here? I don't know. But this is very easy to do. Now, thinking about can we use this to treat genetic disorder? No, we cannot do this. Why we cannot do is because then you have a you have an entirely different person being born. Think about if if a person A is sick, is swear have some genetic disorder, you say, let me take the this nucleus from some other person and put in the oocyte of this person. Of course, you will have a baby, but that baby will have all the genetic component of it. No, this is also an interesting thing. What do you think, who, who, are the, who are the parents of this clone? If you do like this. So that is that question, like, I don't know, someone of you are saying, like you are saying, you are saying, like people want to, don't want to adopt their babies because they want, you know, their own kids. Own kids mean own DNA? You can have kids like that, but the DNA will be from different persons. So why not I give have a baby who is Einstein? <coughs> what what will you consider that? Will you consider that maybe your own baby? Because you give birth to baby, of course you'll give birth to baby, but that will not have your DNA. So who will be the parent of that clone? You guys are not talking. I guess it would be more of like a legal matter that like the person that is being cloned either has to give up their rights to the child or if she's like say I gave or I wanted to be cloned but I couldn't have like the kid or some or yeah I can have the kid so Avery had the kid for me then she was going to give it to me like I feel like that would have to be a decision that was made prior to any hold on for legality whether the person who is going to give birth to that baby. That again, the same thing I'm going what William was telling me that that baby will be the own baby of the person who is giving birth. Because it would both of them would be the parent. Doesn't the same have the right to? Doesn't the same have the right to? Well, like, I would say like legally. Yeah. Well, so like surrogacy, you can take your, like, I could take my whole egg and use it with you, which it would be all my DNA. The problem with this is that you're taking the outer part of the surrogate and taking the DNA from the donor. So it's, you're getting stuff from both parents. So technically, I would say they're both the parents. So you will consider them adopted? Means how that is different. That's what that's what I'm saying. You know, adoption means what? Means people don't like adopted kids because they think they're not their own, right? Maybe the the mother who is giving birth to this baby, it's not own DNA. So that DNA makes its own baby, just DNA. That 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 tell you like you know, said person who is donating you is also has the right. What right to give a skin cell? That's all. I mean, if we're going off what what is needed to create the child, and if you are giving something to create the child, it's your child. I would say both of them, 
both of them are the parents. If having your own kid is considered, they are genetic, like DNA is what makes the child yours, then only the clone would be the parent. But personally, I would say, since both of them are giving something to form the child, because the child wouldn't be able to be formed without <coughs> the skin cell, then they're both technically the parent. Okay, that's one rule. What do you think, Philip? You mean all the genetics? <coughs> all the genetics would be of a single person. But yeah, both are giving to it. Uh, I think it would just have to be like, I mean, I think it would be both, but then if they decided beforehand, like legally, then they would only. And then all the individuals were human clones. Uh, they're just machines you're creating. I mean, what will you call them? If, you, if I make 10 Einstein, I make an army of the Hercules. I mean, would they behave like machines, though? Or are they their own person? Well, they will have all the feelings, but whether you consider them human or not, if you're would creating they, them. Would they have, would well, they have I feel like, I mean, obviously, this isn't exactly the same, but they've done studies of identical twins growing up in different environments and being very different. Oh, yeah, those so, are the epigenetic changes. Those are the epigenetic changes. The environment influenced the epigenome a lot, right? So do we, obviously, I guess we don't really know, but would, so would clones not be affected in the same way by environment? Of course, it could be. So of then I would say they are their own individual because everyone is going to experience different things in their lives. Mm -hmm. Just because Einstein was who he was doesn't mean that if you make a clone of Einstein and he grows up in a poor seven kid household, that he's going to become Einstein. But I don't know. Maybe he'll find a way. <laughs> <laughs> How old is clone? But DNA will be, remember I gave you the example, the DNA will be really old. Yeah. DNA will have all the changes which are going to make it, and actually that happened. Yeah. With the Dolly, Dolly showed all the signs of the initial age. Dolly didn't survive the whole life. Because the DNA had all the mutations and everything happened by that age. Retinomase is a big problem. You will have less retinomase shortening take place, of so course. How long but not only that, you will have all the critical induced damage in the DNA will also accumulate. How long did Dolly live compared to? Dolly actually lived only six years. The life is twelve years. She died prematurely, which showing all the all the premature aging syndrome. So the same issues. Right. And so, yeah. even though her body was, yeah. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. I say that the clone is the age of the DNA. We go off that way. Age of the DNA, we can say that. Yeah. But, but again, all those are, no, it is okay. This is, this is what China was supposed to do. And here also, you see those advertisements, very common. On dark web, you see way more than that. So we have, we have to think about all those. So technologies can be boon, but technology can be really bad also. So let, let's, we, we'll keep on talking about this. I just yeah. wanted you to know those things and have more discussion. So think about this and think what you think about. And we'll talk one day sometime about can we actually fix the... Yeah. 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 Yeah.